Hello, my name is Anthony Francioni, and welcome to the White Box Geospatial YouTube channel. Today, I'll be providing you a quick tutorial on how to use the Stochastic Depression tool in the White Box Tools Open Core. This tool is one of our most popular tools in our library, but also one of the trickiest to properly parameterize. Today, I'll show you how to parameterize this tool for a hydrological DEM using White Box Runner. Before we start, I will provide a quick background on the tool and what application areas it could be applied for. If you're interested in learning more about this tool, you can find out, find out by navigating to our user manual on our learning resources page. This can be found by accessing software, learning resources, scrolling down on the learning resources page to the white box tools user manual. Once the manual loads, the stochastic depression tool is located in the hydrological analysis toolbox. And then here you'll see a list of tools and just scroll down to the stochastic depression. And then here's more information about the, the tool. The stochastic depression analysis tool performs a Monte Carlo simulation to determine the probability of each cell in a DEM belonging to a depression. This tool is commonly applied to wetland and bottom land mapping applications, but could be also used for other hydrological purposes, such as peatland identification, habitat mapping of certain species, and other flow related applications. This tool has five user input parameters, which are the input DEM, the output DEM, the DEM's RMSE value, the error fields correlation length or the autocorrelation range parameter, and lastly, number of iterations. We'll talk more about each parameter and how to parameterize them shortly, but before we go into running the tool, I just want to point out the memory limitations of this tool. This tool creates several temporary rasters in memory, and as a result, is very memory intensive. This will, this will necessarily limit the size of DMs that can be processed on more memory constrained computers. As a rough guide for usage, the computer system will need about six to 10 times more memory than the file size in DM. If your computer process, possesses insufficient memory, you may consider splitting the DM apart into smaller tiles. It is fairly common for this tool to take a longer time to execute depending on the size of your DM and the limitations of your personal computer. Some parts of this tool are coded to take advantage of parallel computer processing, but the entire tool is a bit slower than other tools in Whitebox, just because of the amount of computation that is carried out during its analysis. So now that we're a little more familiar with the tool, let's go ahead and run it. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is launch Whitebox Runner. In a previous video, I talked about how to download Whitebox tools and launch the Whitebox Runner front end. If you, unfamiliar with, if you are unfamiliar with this process or of any of these videos, or you have not yet downloaded white box tools, I will suggest watching those videos first. So let's, let's actually launch white box runner right now. First thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna open a new terminal window and we're gonna wanna CD to the directory that contains the white box tools environment. For me, that's in my, in my documents, in a testing folder, I named Anthony WBT WBT tutorial and then in a folder WBT. You can see this is the WBT folder that I'm in currently in my terminal. And we have the whitebox runner.py script, whitebox underscore tools executable, and so on. So now that we're in this directory, let's go ahead and launch runner with the command Python 3 wb underscore runner dot pi and now let's run it once runner has launched let's navigate to the stochastic, stochastic depression analysis tool in the hydrological toolbox on the left hand side so under hydrological hydrological analysis just scroll down to stochastic depression and the tool is loaded before we actually go into the parameters and running the tool let's take a look at the test data set we'll be using to run this tool on so let's head over to qgis this is a hill shaded 15 meter interpolated raster of the modeste watershed in alberta canada you can see this is an ideal dm to test the tools test this tool as it is located within a watershed and has an abundance of meandering rivers of various sizes the inlet various sizes and lengths and also a variety of depressions this DEM has been preconditioned to remove road embankments. Now that we are familiar with our test D DEM, let's head back to Runner and launch the Stochastic Depression tool. So now let's populate it with the information that we need. The input DEM file 
is going to be our test DEM. And that is DEM null embankment script. Output file we're going to call pdep.tiff. You'll hear me refer to pdep a lot more in this video. And pdep refers to the actual metric of the stochastic depression analysis tool, which is the probability of depression. So pdep is the metric, and stochastic depression analysis is the tool name, just, to, just going forward. So next we have the DEM, root mean square error parameter, and the range of autocorrelation. Properly parameterizing the stochastic depression tool can be tricky. The tool is more sensitive to RMSE than it is error autocorrelation range parameter. The RMSE parameter can be largely determined by the precision of the DEM. But while the DEM's RMSE information is often provided in the source data, the autocorrelation information rarely is. Thankfully, the tool isn't as sensitive to the autocorrelation range parameter, and you can usually determine a suitable value for this parameter with some experimentation. If you are using a LiDAR DEM, an RMSE value between 15 centimeters and 30 centimeters is often suitable. If you have access to the LiDAR data's metadata or have that information from the data supplier, the vertical accuracy would be a good start of value to use for the RMSE parameter. From my experience using this tool, I have gone as low as 15 centimeters for the RMSE parameter, but it's likely you have access to more accurate LiDAR data than I have used in the past. For the autocorrelation range parameter, it is usually reasonable to experiment with values in the range of about 3 to 15 times the resolution. Although the tool isn't as sensitive to the autocorrelation range parameter as it is the RMSE parameter, there are some things to know about the range parameter. First, the larger the parameter value, the longer the tool takes to run, and this can make a large difference in processing time. Second, there is a logical range of values, of parameter values for this tool. For example, it wouldn't make sense to have many hundreds or even thousands of meters. In my experience, I have found that three, five, and eight times the resolutions are ideal to start experimenting with. So for the RMSC value, I'm going to set the value as 0 0.15, uh, which is the equivalent of 15 centimeters. This tool requires meters. Um, so just make sure you make that conversion before you actually enter it. For the autocorrelation parameter, the re resolution of the DEM I'm working with is 15 meters. So in the essence of time, as the larger this parameter, the longer it will take to run. I'm just going to use three times the resolution. So I'm going to put 45 in here. Once again, these are just the values I'm using for this tutorial. By no means will these parameters be optimized for the data set you're working with. Instead, in this tutorial, I just want to essentially shed some light on how to properly parameterize these user inputs parameters. So further experimentation may be needed. Lastly, the iteration parameter. I'm going to use a value of 300. This parameter, parameter controls the number of simulations for the Monte Carlo simulation. From further experimentation for your data set may be required but I have found around 100 to 500 is pretty sufficient. So now that all the information is populated within the parameters, parameter of the tool, we can go ahead and run this tool. As I stated before, this tool is a memory intensive tool and will result in slower processing time. This is expected behavior, but for the purpose of this video, I'm going to pause the video here and we'll start the video up again when this tool is completed. Once it's completed, I'll talk about how long it took to execute and also the uh, computer speci specifications of the machine that I ran the tool on. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause that now. So the tool just executed. It executed in 46 minutes, um, which is not too, too bad. I ran this tool on a machine with 3.6 gigahertz, eight Intel Core i9 processor with 64 gigabytes of RAM. Like I said before, this is a very memory intensive tool and only parts of it are optimized for parallel computing. So now that the tool is executed, let's go and take a look at its output in QGIS. So we'll just have to load it in QGIS first. There it's called PDEP. We'll also just want to change the palette before we actually view it. I've used a Viridis palette in QGIS. I'm going to apply that now. So this is what the output for the stochastic depression tool looks like, and this is the PDEP metric. You will see that looking at the depressions of the data set, they receive values of one or close to it, as these cells are likely to be located within a depressional area. I'm just going to turn off the PDEP 
layer just so we see the underlying hill shade just to get a better reference point. So you'll see up here, there is a lot of smaller depressions. And once we turn on the PDEP metric, you'll see that these small depressions pop very well, meaning that there's a high probability that a depression occurs here. Let's go take another look at another site. I'm just gonna turn the PDEP layer off one more time. Let's maybe go have a look down here, a little bit southern portion of the watershed. Let's turn on the metric here. It looks like there's some sort of depressional area over here. Let's turn it on, turn on the PDEP layer. And yes, a nice depression pops out here. This area has a high probability of depression. You'll see even over here, there's also a very high probability of depression. Let's actually just take a zoom into this river as well. This tool, one thing this tool can do for sure is produce fantastic images, absolutely stunning um, in QGIS with this various palettes. You can get lost just looking in the actual river itself. So you'll see that there's high depressional areas within a river. And you can actually see the flow in the river itself. So that is the PDEP metric uh, and from the stochastic depression tool in white box tools. Uh, that concludes this video. I hope this video has helped you parameterize and use the stochastic depression tool in, white, in the white box tools open core. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in our Google group or send us an email at support at whiteboxgeo.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for all new videos and updates. Thanks for watching.